Hey folks, welcome back to Dieberry Outdoors. Today we are not outdoors yet. Today we're inside, I had a great weekend. I had a barbecue yesterday with some coworkers and friends to celebrate my birthday. So today, Sunday, we're just kind of taking it easy, hanging out in the house, uh, working on some projects, and I wanted to share some of them with you. So I recently got into bug collecting and bug pinning, uh, specifically moths and butterflies and things like that. So I wanted to show you some things that I've been doing. Here is some of my collection so far. I'm a beginner. So the specimens may be a little wonky in their pinning. I found this beautiful waved sphinx moth that I'm looking forward to pinning. And I think I'm gonna preserve these somehow, um, maybe pin them to a board or a shadow box or something like that. I get a lot of moths and things in here uh, from my windowsill. Obviously I don't like going out and catching and killing these bugs. It doesn't really sit well with me. Uh, but this windowsill, because of the holes in the screen here, um, a lot of bugs kind of come in or around the porch light out there, and I'm able to uh, get those guys and then pin them. So that's a, a really cool new hobby of mine, and I'm really excited to uh, share it with you guys as that kind of progresses and I can see what kind of cool things I can catch or find and how I can display them. Now, outside on my porch, I also wanted to show you guys um, another little hobby of mine is gardening. I've got some really cool plants going on here. There's my rose. This is a tomato. I'm not exactly sure what variety this is, We've got some icebox watermelons down here. Uh, my bleeding heart, which has one little flower still on it. We've got some snap peas over there. Here we've got um, lemon balm. Going over to lemon thyme. Some anise, which smells great like licorice. Rosemary. We've got more, uh, or we've got some basil here. Uh, this dill, which is an extremely hardy dill plant. I'm very proud of that one. Uh, some sweet basil. This is a cucumber, which I think is going to absolutely explode uh, all over this porch. We've got lemongrass that I love to cook with my rice. Um, this is a bell pepper. We've got this lavender tree that, again, smells so good. Smell that. You can't smell that, can you? Uh, I don't know what that's called. It's a house plant. It wasn't doing so good inside, so I brought it out here. This as well, this is a spider plant that basically was dead in my house. And I brought him out here and replanted him, took out all the dead leaves, and he's doing great. Here's a cherry tomato. You can see some nice, nice little cherry tomatoes growing there. Another tomato variety. These are some wildflowers. I've got more wildflowers in here that I just planted this morning. And some mint, some spearmint. Oh, there's some jalapenos. You can see them growing. I've got some morning glories down there that are going to grow up this sculpture. And this is a, I believe it's called a false shamrock, a uh, genus of oxalis, um, also called a wood sorrel. Very cool, very unique plant. These actually grow in bulbs, and these flowers will close up at night, and on particularly hot days, uh, these leaves will close up into like a kind of a teepee or tripod formation. All right, so. Got my backpack with some supplies in it. We're gonna head down to the water. I'll show you guys the, uh, the way down there and maybe cook some lunch over a fire real quick. So I used to get really frustrated with having a ton of hobbies. I switched from one thing to another and, um, and it kind of, it would, it would frustrate me because I'd get really into something for a week or two and then, uh, and then stop. I'd you know, kind of just grow out of it and, and get into something else. But I've recently learned to kind of embrace that. And now I sort of like having a ton of different hobbies, you know? I get to experience different things and try new things and learn things. And um, and then if I move on, I move on. Uh, the one thing I did learn though is that I shouldn't invest too much money into any particular project or hobby <laughs> because um, in, you know, a week or two, I might not want to do it anymore. So, um, but something like the outdoors, growing plants, uh, cooking over a fire, camping, uh, things like that have always been a staple in my life and it's always something I'll enjoy. So that's what I want to share with you guys. So this is the back of my house, uh, the back of my apartment. It is a public property, obviously. There's a business downstairs, um, but I work for that company, so I get to enjoy this as my backyard. So uh, I'm very, very fortunate for that. I can cook out here, I can have fires. I camp out here, um, all sorts of things I can fish. Uh, not a very good fisherman, but I try. Here is a fire pit we built. And my favorite spot is down here. Okay. 
So I think we're gonna head back up to the fire pit, um, get a little fire going. I've got some chicken and some peppers in the backpack and we'll cook them up and have a good lunch. So very, very simple kit today. I've got my wood splitting device. Got the bushcraft grill that you guys have probably seen before. Got some chicken, some of these Cubanelle peppers. I think I'm saying that right. Delicious. Cutting board, of course, my spices. This is a handmade spice container. I got these little containers off of Amazon and this is just a piece of waxed um, cotton that I put some elastic on, sewed the elastic on so that I could slide my spices in there. So I got this nice piece of fat wood here, which I'm going to use. Uh, this is store bought because I still haven't found any in my area. I know it exists up here in the Northeast United States, but I haven't been lucky enough to come across any yet. I'm just gonna scrape it a little bit and um, see if we can start a fire here uh, with this fat wood. Now, this beautiful knife is a knife that my father made, handmade. Um, it does not have a 90 degree spine on it, so I'm not going to use that to strike my ferro rod. Um, I'm going to use the trusty modified pocket knife for the 90 degree spine. And we're also going to use that to try to shave some of this fat wood off to give something for our sparks to ignite. All right, that should be good. Now we'll get our ferro rod out. Let's see if we can get a spark going and light this fat wood. Easy as that. All right, so while that fire burns down, I wanted to show you guys something I found in the river the other day. I thought this was very cool. This is a bird. It's the carcass of a bird that I found washed up after a flood in the river. Um, you can see the skull here. Very cool, and also the talons are still attached. I'd love to get all this other material off of the bones. Um, if anybody knows how to do that, uh, please let me know. Um, it's been sitting out here for a while. I'm actually surprised it hasn't gotten uh, nabbed up by a raccoon or something uh, by now. But, uh, yeah, I'd love to, you know, get all the material off of these bones and whiten them up a little bit and display them. So if you guys know how to do this, please leave me a comment. All right, so I ran inside and grabbed this pan. Um, this is a cheap uh, camping cooking pan I got uh, from Walmart. As you can see, after one use, it's already got a lot of scratches in it. Um, but this should do just fine. I didn't know if I had enough heat on this fire to really cook over a grill to be able to cook the chicken. So I figured a pan would do the trick and then we'll do the peppers over the grill. So I think there's gonna be enough residual heat here if I kind of squash this fire with the pan and uh, get my seasonings ready. It should be able to cook the chicken nicely. Let's get that back in there. So first we're gonna add a little olive oil. And we'll let that warm up a little in there. And then we'll use the trusty pocket knife to open up our chicken. It's 
so while that chicken cooks, I'm gonna place my grill here, and I'm just gonna pop these whole Cubanelle peppers right over the fire. And as that chicken cooks, we're gonna get out our spice kit here. I'm gonna get some curry up in there. Some paprika, smoked paprika. Some adobo, which is my go-to seasoning for basically everything. And finally, a little fresh cracked black pepper. All right, our chicken's looking good. Let's see if we can give it a flip here. Nice. Heat might be a little high for these guys, but uh, we'll remove them from the heat in a little bit and let them finish cooking off. Meanwhile, I'm gonna try to rotate these peppers here. All right. Nice, that's what we're talking about, that nice blistered pepper. I think I'm actually, I think I'm actually gonna throw these peppers in the pan because I don't want them to get them too uh, burnt and charred up there. All right, so our chicken and peppers is done. Look at this. Oh, that looks so good. See how we did. Let's go. Mm. All right, all right. Use Cuban oil peppers, man. They got the flavor that you would expect from like a hot pepper, but they're so sweet, almost like a bell pepper sweet. Very, very good. Excellent over a fire like this. Man, I'm gonna enjoy this. If you guys can't tell, I'm sweating. It's about 90 degrees out here, probably a really bad time to be cooking food over a fire. So I'm gonna eat this and then go cool off in the river. I'll catch you guys in a little bit. Thank you all so much for joining me. That was a delicious meal. I'm glad I got to show you guys some things in my house. If there's anything you're interested in or you wanna know more about, please let me know in the comments. Please like and subscribe and uh, have a great day. I'm hot. I'll see you guys later.